How are you doing? Hi, Angela. Hi, Joe. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me okay? Oh my goodness. Hello. Hi, Andrea. Sylvia, hello. Hi. It looks, sounds, I think everybody can hear me okay. Hey, Anita. Marianne, Sandra, hi, welcome. Hi, Pat. Just waiting for more people to show up. Hi, welcome, welcome. Hoping everybody can hear me okay. Margaret, hi. Hi, Karen. Annette, hi. Else, hello. My camera keeps jumping or my screen. Hello, Anja. Belinda. Sound is good. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Messages are <laughs> all the all the messages are like uh, flying by. I'm trying to uh, Jolanda, Suzanne. Hey, David. How are you doing? How's vacation going? Hello. Hello. Okay, so um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Angelica Turner, and I joined uh, Elizabeth Craft Designs a year ago, last May. Um, so I've been designing collections for Els, and uh, I'm having lots of fun. So this is my very, very first uh, life ever. <laughs> so not just with Els, but... Uh, I have never done a live before, so hopefully uh, you enjoy it and uh, have fun uh, with my uh, demo. I'm going to, let me switch here. So a couple of, about three weeks ago at the end of April, I posted this particular project. Uh, it's a shadow box that I made with one of my new, uh, new dies from the uh, Evening Rose collection. And it's got all the little butterflies, the florals, and I had several people ask about uh, me doing a demo for it. So I figured I will do that today for you. Um, so let me switch to my uh, table screen right here. So the first thing I am going to do is uh, go through the process of doing my florals. Uh, coloring and shaping the leaves and also finishing the coloring on my butterflies. Um, on all of these, I did uh, cut everything out of basil cardstock. I wanted everything a little bit more sturdy. So I did color cardstock on everything, a pale yellow, a light blue, pale green. Uh, these tiny little white flowers right here, they are from the um, soft finish cardstock. Uh, Elizabeth Craft Designs, and then the green is also from uh, from Basil. Um, oh, one thing before I forget, the winner from uh, for the fiftieth uh, fifty dollar gift certificate from last week is Francisca Van Vick. So that is our winner 
for the $50 gift certificate. Congratulations, Francisca. Get uh, in contact with Elizabeth Craft Designs and they will get that taken care of for you. Um, don't forget to um, comment, like, comment, and share for a chance to win another $50 gift certificate this week. Uh, and uh, let's see where we are. So back to our little demo. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and color my florals here. And I'm going to be using the Spice Marmalade ink. And for that floral, that one comes from the 2116 Florals 27. Um, I used a uh, large and a medium flower on that. And for my coloring, I'm just going to go ahead and let me get actually my mat here. So that doesn't right there. Non stick mat. And I'm just flickering in my ink from the edges. And I'm also going to do a little bit darker in the center here. I'm using for this one, I'm using a slightly smaller dabber or brush just because of the way I wanted my ink or my coloring to look. I didn't want a lot of ink all over the, the petal. This is just a little ink. Uh... So in this case, I'm using an ink, uh, a, a blending brush. It's one of the, the, it's like a maybe a quarter inch or something like that thick. Uh, of course, sometimes I use uh, the blending tool like this or bigger brushes, depending on what I'm coloring or, or what kind of uh, finished look I want on my flowers. This one, I wanted something that looked like that. So as you can see, you get a lot of uh, dimension with the coloring. Same thing with this one. And actually, I have some florals already completed over here, um, just because it was going to be a lot so here's the finished flower, which is going to be that one. And then this one, it's more, the coloring is going to be more from the center. And I'm just going to pull it towards the edge of the petal. Another thing I always keep in mind, and depending on how juicy my ink pads are, I do try to test it off on either my mat or a piece of scrap paper so I don't put a lot of, like a blob of ink on my flower. Okay, so there's the coloring for those two. Here's that. And this is the completed one. Once we do the shaping, it'll look like this. Okay, uh, I will go ahead and also add some color to my florals. Oh, wrong one. So, some green. Uh, okay, I'll start with the rustic wilderness. And for the leaves, those ones come uh, from set number 2118 Floral Greenery 2. So I use these two right here. And I think I also have another one in my stack that I use this one as well from the 2124 mini florals too. Okay, and same thing for this one. I'm just going to kind of pull it from the base of the leaf. 
and make that darker like that okay, let me see if I can see you guys comments okay and it's not a lot of coloring but it adds a good amount of shading to your leaves for this one i'm just going to use the uh here i'm using molon for this one slightly brighter not too dark same thing just pulling in the color from the base of the leaf to the tip and you can make it as light or as dark and this is an option if you're using color cardstock like me i mean you don't need to do the coloring i usually feel like it adds a little bit extra and I am going to also use the mode lawn. Actually, I think it's a rustic. For our stamen, I want to add that green in the center. So we're going to use do that to the center of my stamen as well. like that so that's that one and I have two tiny little flowers here white um, so let me show you my little basket these ones are already have been colored and shaped um, just was a lot of them to do on the uh, on the live so I prepped a lot of stuff ahead of time um, those little flowers actually come from the 2123 Elegant, oh, no, not the box. Uh, let me get the right one. Here we go. 2117 Florals 28. So I used the smallest ones in this set, uh, which is, I think it's hiding in there. Yeah, so I used this ones right here, the smallest die for that one. Okay, so for this ones, I just want to add a touch of green. I don't know if you can see it here. Just a little bit of shading in the center. So they're not all completely white. I'm just going to do a little bit of shading in the center of those two. So that's for the all the white ones. And for my butterfly, let me find the right stylus that I was using. I'm going to go ahead and finish the coloring on this one. So this, the largest one, I went ahead and colored all the blue from the center and pulled the color off to the tips of the wings. Um, in this one, I'm going to do the coloring from around the edge of the wings. And then just kind of make it darker and blend it into the uh, light, lighter color, color of the cardstock. Okay. I just want a good contrast. Trying to see what everybody's chatting about, but I, they're going, <laughs> the, uh, the comments are going way too fast. Oh, thank you, Terry. And one thing about when coloring something like this, it's always keep uh, a very light touch. Don't press too hard. 
Okay, so that's the coloring on the butterflies. Now, what I want to do with the butterflies before uh, for a finishing touch is I wanted to use, and on my original sample, I did uh, do a, a, a coat of uh, mica watercolors. So here I have um, kind of a silverish color, it looks like this one right here. And I think I'm going to use uh, this one right here also that has a bluish undertone to it. Uh, let me see where's my brushes. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to grab uh, some of that good color. And put that in the darker you don't have to be exact or anything it's just a coat over the uh, coloring that you did to give it a kind of a sparkle or a shimmer more of a shimmer You can see I'm not being uh, too ex no exact, no precision on the coloring. I just want to add some of that shimmer. Can you see it? I think we'll be able to see it once it's completely dry. And these are the um, Phenotech M1 or M1200 set. I can't see much of that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put that. Yeah, you can you can actually kind of see that shimmer right there. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside and let them dry while I we do the the rest of the uh build the rest of the box. Okay. And again, no precision, just doing kind of a coat of this shimmer paint over. That's why I kind of wanted to use a basil cardstock in this case, because I knew I was going to watercolor. And so I wanted something nice and uh, thick so it wouldn't break down while I was doing the watercolor, especially for this ones. I'm kind of going to do the same thing with my decorative or my lacy uh, set here. And if they didn't dry completely by the time we get to the point of assembling them, um, we can, I can go ahead and dry them, finish drying them with the uh, heat tool. Okay, I think I'm going to set them up on a piece of, uh, you can see there, I don't know if it shows, I'm going to set them there so it, they finish drying. And I'm adding the two different colors 
so we get some of that darker color in some of the areas and lighter color or it doesn't make the cards that darker okay there's my little tweezers here i think that will work put that aside and then this one I want to do this one it's going to go on the front of the box so this one I not doing the the base or the solid piece of it um, I'm just going to do the decorative or lacy piece of the butterfly okay so we'll let those dry get this out of the way for now so the butterflies are from 2119 layer butterflies now there's another set that is very closely named it's uh, similar to mine it's layer butterfly by Annette so they're they're a bit different the names turned out to be very close uh, but they, there's two two sets in there that are named closely okay so now that we have the butterflies aside and drying okay and we have our flowers also colored we are going to go ahead and shape our flowers uh, let me move some of this stuff out of the way here and find my styluses okay so for my flowers for this ones because um they are um uh, out of uh, basil cardstock so it's fairly thick and the amount of shaping if you can see the final result i want to put a lot of the shaping on these ones i'm going to ha go ahead and spritz them with water so usually i just kind of put a towel down or something and then i'm just going to spritz them on the back uh, so the cardstock becomes more flexible and once it dries it will make it that the shape of the flower it doesn't fall up flat this ones were made earlier in the week and as you can see they have they haven't lost any of their dimension so i'm going to go ahead for this particular one which is the larger one i'm going to go ahead and start from the back and i'm going to pull from the tip of the petal into the center like that and I think I need a lot slightly bigger one for this one yeah you can see I'm putting a lot of pressure on it to give it that those those lines when it when it dries it'll dry nice and curled as you can see then once you do that you don't turn it over and do the center you know then we'll set that aside to dry since it's being spritzed with water and then for the smaller one i'm going to do the same technique place it face down pull it from the tip of the petal towards the center and as you can see i'm always doing it in one stroke in one direction so you want to start from the tip to the center always then you turn it over you do your center of the flower and you have that so we'll set these aside to dry okay so for our leaves right here let's see what did i do okay so that's that one so both of them are going to be shaped on the back so i'm going to place it face down and i'm going to pull it from the tip of the leaf 
and then just kind of pull it towards the base. This ones I'm not spread seeing because they do not require a lot of dimension. I'm just going to place it down, press it on the back, and then press it a little bit lightly on the stem like that. Okay, then we have the larger leaves. Uh, this one will work. Same thing, just a little bit from the tip. Pull it towards the base of the of the leaf. On dry cardstock again because they don't require a lot. Turn it over and touch down a little bit on your stem, and those are done. So all our leaves are done. For our little stamens, as you can see, they are little and I like to make things hard on myself. <laughs> so on this ones, I am going to go on the back of the stamen. So I placed it down. No water on this one. They're too delicate for any water. And I'm just going to press down on each of the tips. Because I want them to have a little bit of curl. And then on the front, I'm just going to, okay, actually, I want to run it down the stem of each one so it curls a little bit more. So like that, then turn it over, and you do the center, and you end up with something that looks like that. Okay, and the tiny little flowers, those ones, if I can find one of the finished ones, okay, you're going to place it face down with a slightly smaller one, okay, I'm going to just press it on each petal on the back, and then turn it over and do the center. And you have those tiny little ones done. It doesn't, for this once again, I'm doing it on dry because it's not a lot of dimension. It's just enough to get the petals to pop a little bit so they're not completely flat. So I don't know if the camera can catch that. And that is our shaping for, for all our little pieces. Uh, let me bring in the actual box. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and assemble our box. Let me get the butterflies out of here real quick so they keep their almost dry. Okay, so for our box, I'm using the set. 2123 elegant decorative box and I'm using so these are your two pieces for your box this is the wrap which is this piece right here with this piece I want to make that window as big as possible so you want to use these two pieces to cut the box or the wrap of the box and then this is the box that will hold um, all your florals and your butterflies so that is the two pieces I'm using right now. And I have a couple of extra things right here that I'm not sure I'm, I'm, if I'm going to use or not. So I'm going to set them aside. Okay. Let's see what we got. I have a piece of acetate that is going to be on the front of my box. Okay. So for my paper here. Uh, let me find a blue here. And green. So I always do the edges of my paper. I like to get rid of that white core. Oop, if I can keep that in my hand. <laughs> So I like to always edge my paper and it gives it a nicer, more finished look. Okay, I'm not going to use the green. Same thing with this one. 
I'm just going to pull the blue from the butterfly. Sorry, I haven't been taking keeping track of your of your comments. Uh, oh, thank you, Sylvia. Oh my goodness, I'm so nervous. I can feel myself like my face is like super hot and I can feel like super flushed. <laughs> but thank you so much. Okay, so there's our inking and I already inked everything else. So here's our piece. Oh, I kind of mixed them already. Okay, so let's go ahead and assemble our bags first. Uh, when you cut it, you're going to have little score lines on in there. So that already is there for you to fold. And I like to always kind of use my bone folder to just kind of give it a nice crisp fold on it. Hi Astrid, you're the <laughs> thank you. Hi Annika. Oh thank you, Annette. Okay. Blue. Let's see. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue my tabs right here to make my box. Just put it on all of them at once real quick. How am I doing on time? Oh wow, already halfway through the hour. Okay, I think I think well I'll be able to complete it within the hour. Oh thank you, Karen. Okay, so here's your box. Then we're going to go ahead. This is going to go in the center right here. So it's going to be the background to all my florals and my butterflies. And I'm just going to center. I believe I cut it slightly smaller than the actual box itself. I wanted a little bit of that blue border around it. And I did change up the colors a little bit from my previous um, project. The other one, I think it was a green box with um, blue flowers. This one I did blue box with yellow flowers. Okay, so that one. And then we have this panel for the back. And of course here I just, I use the, uh, this particular patterns, but you can use any patterns you want on it, any colors. And you can make this, for example, instead of doing a card, you can make this a card. For somebody very special, like a Mother's Day, birthday. Uh, even graduation right now, well, the graduation's happening. Okay, these are the panels for the side of my box. Now, I like to always make my box with uh, heavier uh, cardstock. Uh, here, I use basil. And then I like to decorate it with a pattern paper. It makes it sturdier. Um, if you have, you know, sturdier card stocks, uh, it works great because it makes your box, the base of your box, nice and sturdy. And then you can decorate it with uh, whatever pattern paper you want. In this case, this is the kind of the the color I had that worked with my uh, with the colors on the pattern paper, so that's why I I ended up uh, using this particular 
particular card stack. Okay, so let's see here. Looks like we got all our panels. And I cut them just slightly smaller than my uh than my box because I wanted to have that um uh, I wanted to have that blue border around it. So I wanted a nice little dark border around all my pattern paper. So there's our our ends our box itself. And let's see here. Oh, our wrap or our enclosure for the box. Now, depending on the thickness, you might have to, if it's uh, thicker than this, you might have to run uh, your stylus and do a sharper um, line or fold line instead of just um, using the lines that the die gives you. Sometimes if it's a, a, sharp, a thicker cardstock, you do need to, to run another another line with your embossing tool. That way it gives you a better, a sharper fold. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue my uh, piece of transparency to the inside. I placed a sticky note on it so I wouldn't lose it. And with all the other paper, Just a thin line of glue. And then place your transparency. I did cut it slightly smaller so it wouldn't uh, get in the way of the fold. Let's press it down. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and close it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> thank you, Belinda. Yeah, I, I I cut it and then I put it uh with my pattern paper and I couldn't find it. I'm like, okay, I need to put something on it so I don't lose track of it. Otherwise, I'm going to spend half an hour trying to find the thing with everything else. Okay, so there is our box and then I want to decorate the sides and the back as well with uh, the matching paper. Again, cut a little bit smaller, slightly smaller, like one sixteenth of an inch. So that I, that, so that I can have that blue uh, border around it from the cardstock. And here's my one side. And the other side. Okay, so let's see if it slides in nicely. Yep, so there's our box. Okay, now let's uh let's do the fun part and decorate all of this uh let's see if our flowers and butterflies all are completely dry and you, now you can see the uh the shimmer from the paint and you can still see that the 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 shading that i did with the uh distress inks underneath it okay so the butterflies are almost dry the flowers are dry um, so let's go ahead and get all of these pieces here. 
So I got I got one flower already completely assembled that I did earlier. It's the, the same size as this one. Yeah, so I'll just put these together. Oh, 41 minutes. 20 minutes to go. Shoot, it is going by fast. <laughs> you can see I got a ton of different uh, little branches and leaves that I cut and uh, colored ahead of time. Otherwise, I will have spent uh, way too long trying to assemble, put, it, put everything together. Okay. Let's see. So each flower, I'm going to do two petals or two layers on each flower. A little bit of glue in the center and offset your petals. Same thing with the smaller one. Glue in the center and offset your petals. Now, one of the things I have to keep in mind with these flowers is um, how high they're going to set or how many layers I'm putting on them. Because I want to make sure that when I close this, everything is going to fit in within the box, right? That they're not going to stick up too high. Um, so that's why I wanted to do roses at the beginning and they were not going to work out because it was going to be a little bit too, too many layers for it two-dimensional so they were not going to fit in there um, okay so for my little uh, centers or the uh, stem in, I'm going to do just a little bit of glue in the center and start layering them down uh, I think I'm doing three of them three or four on each because I wanted to get them to look nice and full in there. And then I just offset or rotate it slightly so they don't align with each other. And then the next one. Again, offset it a little bit and just press it down with either your little tweezers or a stylus. And I usually just kind of and you have something that looks like that. Okay, so there's one of our flowers. And then I'm going to use the slightly, uh, the medium size stamen. So the stamen come in, let's see, is it the same die set? Ah, uh, yes. So here's your stamen. So you have three different sizes, um, large, medium, and small. So I use the large ones here, medium here, and then the uh, small and this one. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to take one first, glue it down, little bit of glue on the second one, glue it down, and then a little bit of glue for the third one. And then just making sure that I am offsetting them slightly so they don't align with each other. And it looks like this one is aligning a little bit too much. Ah! It came off. And it came completely off. Okay. There we go. Let's try this again. 
Hopefully I didn't ruin it. There we go. Okay. Voila. So there's our three flowers. Uh, our butterfly bodies, we're going to put them aside over here for the butterflies once they're dry. It's a uh, basil textured. Um, I think uh, the only smooth one I have right now of that brand is like black and white. So this is all texture and I don't know if you can see it. That's why kind of when I, especially when I'm coloring basil textured, I do have a tendency of uh, using the brushes more than anything because it gives me a better coloring uh, uh, finish or more of an even color on the texture of that cardstock. Okay, so let's see how we are going to hit these. Get the butterflies. And I kind of had the idea of how I wanted to uh, set this up when I started uh, planning it. And now I don't remember exactly, but we'll figure it out. Ooh, 10 minutes. Okay, let's see. And don't forget to uh, like, comment, and share again for a chance to win a $50 gift certificate. Okay, so let's see. First thing is layering the uh, baby breath. So for this one, let me find where's the bag. Uh, 2118, it's this piece right here, the baby breath. I didn't do use the flowers um it kind of made it feel a little bit too crowded or too many uh too many of those little flowers so i'm just going to use the uh green background uh just to create a fuller a fuller uh look on the background within my box and i think i'm just going to layer them like that To start with there we go okay so I'm going to put a little bit of glue um, actually let me see if I need to put some foam that's behind that I'm just going to give it a little bit of shape with my fingertips so it doesn't lay completely flat. I'm not going to put foam dots because I don't want it to create a lot of dimension and then I have to put layer everything else on top of it and uh, and then cre end up with it being too too high and not being able to uh, to fit it in the box when it closes. So there's that one. Okay, and I'm just using my fingertips for this. It doesn't need a. I don't need to use my stylus or or a shaping tool for this. Okay. And then this one over here. So there you go. Okay, so let's start with the largest flower here. I'm gonna place it there. This butterfly. I think it's going to have to go this way like that okay now we're going to go ahead and place 
little bit more of these leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the large flower down. Broccoli. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that is a very sad broccoli. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm not sure if that's uh like parsley. Oh, I see. <laughs> It does, huh? Well, if we if we need no, no, there's a couple of good ideas. If we need to make cards, uh, with a vegetable theme, uh, we know we know to use the uh the baby spread for that. That is so funny. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and glue the the medium size flower as well. It'll give me my points where I can start building with all my my extra little leaves. Okay, so now it's a matter of uh, giving, just kind of start tucking in and attaching all our leaves. So it looks, we can give it a good arrangement okay. Now this one, I'm going to fold it like this and I'm going to glue it right at the bottom. Like this. If I can get it to stick, there we go. So it looks like that. Another one on this side. Sorry, I think I am missing a lot of your a lot of your comments and I don't know if three flowers will make it a little bit too crowded. Get another one of these. And in projects like this, with so many little pieces and layers, tweezers are my best friend. <laughs> They come in very, very handy. Here's another little branch. Okay, let's see, butterflies are fairly dry. Now I'm going to give them also a little bit of dimension. Again, I'm just using my fingers. Uh, let's see, where's my other layers? Make sure they're dry, yep. Should 
shoot, we are at 11.46, so, okay, there's that, get my butterfly body here, Again, just doing a little bit of dimension on the wings with my fingertips. I mean, align her, it, the body, it kind of shifted a little bit. Okay, there's one butterfly. Let's do this one. Okay, and the body for that one. Put some glue on it. Clean my fingertips real quick. Oh, thank you, Annette. Thank you, Jane. Okay, so here is our butterflies, and you have darker color, and then the lighter, the lighter uh, decorative layer on top of it. So I like the contrast of a little bit of the of the colors, and of course, all that shimmer. And here's our third butterfly. Oh, running out of time. Shoot. Okay. So I think I'm going to do one here and one here. Like that. I have to do some foam dots for that. Let's see where I left them. Okay, here we go. Just going to do a thick foam dot behind it. Place it in there. Same thing for this one. How are we doing in time? Oh, 12 o'clock already. Shoot. This one doesn't want to come out. Okay, here we go. And this one will go in this corner like that okay so I do have all of these little flowers I did just in case I wanted to add some white flowers which I think there's a couple of spots and needs a little bit of these white flowers okay so it uh, looks like we are out of time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and complete it, finish it. I did have an idea of uh, using this butterfly on the front of the box over here as an extra decorative piece. 
and as well as I wanted to see if I wanted to do like a decorative border around it this way with the uh, with a decorative uh, border set. I can't find it now. Oh, this one right here. So the 2121 Elegant uh, Decorative Borders. Um, but I wasn't sure, uh, but I'll play with it. Um, I'll complete it and then I'll put a picture of uh, the completed project later today. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Else. Thank you, Barbara. Petra, thank you very much. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'll try to catch up on your all your comments later today. Thank you um, and hope to see you next time. Goodbye.